Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. This is the heart of Hillary Clinton's electoral map advantage. Take a look at the most recent poll we've seen out of Michigan. 42% to 38%. That's a four-point race in a state where Barack Obama beat Mitt Romney by nine points. This is too close for comfort for the Democrats. That's why you see so much campaign activity there. Also, out last night, a brand new Des Moines Register poll in Iowa, 46% to 39%, a seven-point lead for Donald Trump in Iowa. This causes concern not so much about Iowa, which the Clinton folks already thought was out of reach, but what else is happening around Iowa if that is happening in Iowa? Let's go to the electoral map and look at the path to 270. This is the, the current battleground map. Hillary Clinton at 268, only two shy of 270. Where does she go to find it? Well. They feel pretty good about Nevada. They think the early vote there is really good. That gets her over to 274. But this is what's critical. If Donald Trump is able to dig into a place like Michigan, look at that. It drops Hillary Clinton down to 258. Where does she go to find the rest? She must get a big battleground prize like a Florida or a North Carolina. That would do it to get her back over, over 270. But that is going to require some work. That is why you see Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton heading to Michigan in the final days. They need to keep fortifying that blue wall. Jake? So just how worried should Democrats be? With me here, our panel, CNN Chief Political Correspondent Dana Bash, RNC Communications Director and Chief Strategist Sean Spicer, former Democratic Governor of Michigan Jennifer Granholm, CNN Political Commentators Van Jones and Alice Stewart, and we're going to bring back CNN Political Director David Chalian. Governor, I'm starting with you. Start. What's going on in Michigan? Is Hillary Clinton going to be able to pull it out? It sounds like it's really tight. Barack uh, Obama's going there, so obviously they're nervous. I know, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, usually <laughs> Michigan is like, you know, <laughs> It's totally great. It's Everybody awesome. on the ground it's is awesome so excited. It's awesome that the president has to be deployed to Michigan. <laughs> no, it's just, I agree. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. We, we love all of the attention. We really do. But here's what I would say is that a lot of what has not been covered is that Michigan has early absentee voting. And in that early absentee vote, Democrats have banked 50,000 absentee votes, meaning they're over what the Republicans have. In fact, the number of absentee votes that we are seeing right now is well over what it was in 20. 12 for Democrats. So we're feeling good about that bank. And um, we also know that, you know, election day is going to be key. So I, I would say one other thing that I think it's important to realize. Michigan's demographics are, are very interesting because you do have a large Arab American population and you do have a significant Latino population as well. So when you combine African American, Latino, uh, Arab American and women and millennials, the millennial vote for the even in early is up, we're, we're encouraged. Well, Sean, I, I wouldn't want to put my money in that bank. Well, let me, let me ask you, what's, right, what's going on here? Let's take that right now, I, man. Okay, right but now. Right now. Governor, <laughs> since 1988, a Republican hasn't carried Michigan. The idea that you're deploying the President of the United States 48 hours from an election to go to Michigan says that that blue wall has cracked big well, time. Yeah, Iowa exactly. hasn't been carried, was carried twice by Obama. Seven point lead, according to the Des Moines Register. But, but state Trump after state. Trump is not ahead in Michigan. Hey, Trump has not been ahead in then Michigan. Then why are you wasting the President of the United States' time then? Tell him to go somewhere else. Dana, why is the president going to Michigan? Because, it's, it's, maybe because Democrats shopping. in Michigan who are not on television when they don't have to, to be, with all due respect, uh, to be very positive, positive yeah. are saying, and I talked to some yesterday, that they're very worried. That they're very worried because it is narrow and they don't want to take any chances. Well, and that's, that's for sure. You don't want to take yeah, any chances. Know, speaking of awesome, to the governor's point, what's really awesome is two weeks ago, Hillary Clinton was leading in Michigan by 13 points. Slowly it's gone from eight to six to five. Now she's only four points ahead in a state where Democrats have won that since 1988. And speaking of on the air, Hillary's putting two million dollars on the air in Michigan. That that, in addition to President Obama being there, they're worried. What's going on? Beds are <laughs> damp. In <laughs> <laughs> well, wetting their beds. You're saying Democrats are wetting in their beds. In general. Uh, 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 hey, but look, that's a four-point uh, lead. Uh, that's too, that's uh, within uh, the margin of error. That's uh, scary uh, for uh, Democrats. Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. There is a crack in the blue wall, and it has to do with trade. This is this is the ghost of Bernie Sanders. Yep. There is there is a discontent with some Democratic voters over trade, and some blame Hillary Clinton. And so you've got to go back there and, and, and shore back up. But here's the reality: 
there is a, a clear case to be made and it's being made by Democrats to come to stay home, come here. Listen, you don't like where the bus is going. You don't let a drunk guy drive the bus to, to solve the problem. But, but listen, we, there's no point pretending that there, there's not some, 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 some concern here. And, and let's, David, let me, just say, let, me just, let me just say, it makes sense that if there is concern mm -hmm. that white working class voters who are supporting Trump overwhelmingly in Iowa and Ohio, two states where Donald Trump is favored, are really surging and really showing him strong support, why wouldn't they show up in Michigan? That's right. And I also think this speaks, and Sean probably can speak more to this than anybody else at the table here, but to the power of big data right now, because what is happening is, and this is both sides, right? I mean, Robbie Mook said Michigan is tightening. He sees it. Uh, Robbie the, Mook, the Clinton campaign manager. The Clinton campaign manager. The Republicans have absolutely, on the Trump data side, also seen Michigan as a target closing at the end. And what you can do when you have all this data coming in, make these last-minute decisions. That's why in the final week, Bill Clinton twice, Hillary Clinton twice, Barack Obama once. That kind of firepower would not be sent to Michigan no unless everybody no, was seeing no, 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 there's, And there's no question that the polls have been tightening. I don't want to be, you know, completely Pollyanna about it. But I would say to your point, Van, in that very poll that you described where she's four points up, she gets better marks on trade than he does by four points because people have seen what she has said. Bernie Sanders has been there campaigning for her, and she really has been very clear about wanting to renegotiate. Napoli. While we're talking about while we're talking about Bernie Sanders, I want to bring in this uh, this uh, uh, this tape of a student introducing Bernie Sanders. I believe it was in in Iowa uh, on November fifth. Uh, and he actually has to be escorted off the stage by Clinton's Iowa communications director. Take a look. She is so trapped in the world of the elite that she has completely lost grip of what it's like to be an average person. She doesn't care. Voting for another lesser of two females, there's no point. Oops. Got the millennial vote all locked up, huh? <laughs> Oops. Listen, um, <laughs> that Everything wasn't good. Awesome. That wasn't good. And you can't spin that. But here's, but here's the reality. Um, you do have a bunch of young folks who still have heartburn and they have rug burn from the from the primary. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a view that I think was a mistaken view that the uh, young Sanders voters would act in 2016 the same way that Hillary Clinton's voters yeah. acted in 2008. They would come home easily. And in fact, that has not turned out to be the case. And yet, what you're seeing now is a millennial surge. When you look at Funny or Die, when you look at all the, the pop icons that are coming out, it's actually starting now to be cool to be for Hillary Clinton. And that's going to make a big difference on Tuesday. I think that this election needs to be kept in perspective. Two months ago, it was going to be an electoral disaster for Republicans. We weren't going to keep the Senate. We potentially could lose the House. Now we are going to keep the Senate unequivocally. I feel very good about that. But look at, look at, listen, hold on. But look at wow. what the states that we're competing in. Every know, single one of them is said. one that Barack Obama won twice. Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, yes, Romney got that one. But Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Michigan, yeah. Wisconsin. We have opened and widened this map like never before. So it's not just Michigan. It's North Carolina. And it's where they're putting their time and their money. They recognize that we have widened the map. They are on defense. Robbie Mooks should put the fireworks away because I think it's going to be a late night. And I think that the momentum in every single one of those states, bar none, is with Donald Trump and the Republicans. No. First of all, the, the Senate, that was a, a pretty uh, bold prediction. We'll see if that happens. But, 24, but, 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 but Simon, I would just say it's I equivocal. Say, this is, Let's this just is, say it's an equivocal. This is what I want to say, though. On, on your point, uh, North Carolina, perfect example. I did a story on the millennial vote in North Carolina recently, and there was no question, actually did surprise me, how much re remaining opposition there was to Hillary Clinton. And it was actually, frankly, people repeating back words of Bernie Sanders That's saying right. when people tell you how to vote don't listen to them and I said but is Bernie Sanders now telling you that it doesn't matter I want to say so, so, it, so it is residual and I do think it's kind of as we get in these final hours the fact that Donald Trump's base is coming home and his people are coming home and Hillary Clinton's having more let me ask problems. you Pam before you say that President Obama was in Fayetteville North Carolina uh, there was a nice moment where he, there was a, a, a pro-Trump supporter, and he shouted down the crowds, you know, listen to this man, respect this man, he's allowed to do it. But there's also a frustration you can hear in President Obama's voice in the crowd not listening to him. Take a look. Hey, everybody! Everybody! Hey! Hey! Listen up! Hey! I told you to be focused, and you're not focused right now! Listen to what I'm saying! <laughs> Hey, and he's not just talking about that protester there, is he, Van? <laughs> he's not, but let me just say two things about that that was so amazing. First of all, he's not running. 
I'm just saying, but just, but there's something beautiful about, about that. He was yelling because he wanted the protester, the dissenter, to be respected. Right. Not punched, not right. drug out of here on a stretcher. And, and so I think that's very, very important. The other thing is, can you imagine what would have happened if that crowd had gotten out of control? With the President of the United States standing right there, something bad had happened. And so there's a desperation there, I think, also to make sure that nothing bad happened um, on his watch. I think with regard to that, I think the way he handled that was was very respectful. Pointing out the fact this was an elderly man, he was a veteran, and, a veteran. and we need to show respect. I thought that was uh, very good. But clearly he's uh, frustrated with the fact he doesn't have control. And, and in addition to that, this week, many of the speeches and interviews he's been giving is reminding folks, millennials and all, and all if you vote for Donald Trump, you're basically handing away my legacy. Everything that I have accomplished and done as president, he has vowed to take away. So he is not really being able to pr promote and tout Hillary's favorables, but tout and, and criticize Donald Trump because he is going to lose his legacy. And that's really his message. There is frustration out. among Democrats, and it seems from President Obama that African American turnout is not where it was for him in 2012 and 2008. That it's that it's it's lagging. Surprise! Which, I mean, I, to Van's point, I don't think uh, the Clinton campaign was ever, ever counting on African American turnout out to be at the levels it was uh, for the first African-American president. Uh, and in fact, I think what you're seeing is, uh, I think we need to see what happens on Tuesday. The Latino vote may end up being a That's critical part of the storyline on Tuesday night. Uh, if, it, if it really does increase as it's over, uh, Latinos make up a much bigger share of the pie than they did four years ago. And it's one of Hillary Clinton's strongest groups in that Obama coalition. That may make up for a dip in the African-American so, vote. So I just want to come back at you on the the, the lack of enthusiasm. Just take two states. I mean, North Carolina, you all have been reporting that the African American vote was down. Why, is, why was it down initially? It was because of voter suppression, that they closed down 17 counties, closed down sites, shortened hours. There was this purging of African, largely African American votes. Now, though, over the weekend, they have seen an incredible spike. And so in 2012, Barack Obama got 23% of the African American early vote. And here, now, it's 20, this before all of the numbers are in from yesterday, it's 22.3% in North Carolina. In Florida, the numbers are up. You guys have been reporting that the numbers were down since 2008. But since 2012, the African American numbers are up 22%. Hold so, on. But, 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 like, okay, so you brought up. So I'm just saying, and, 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 let me just finish my point on the Latino vote in Florida up 120 percent. So, bottom line is that yeah. new America is really showing up for Hillary Clinton. Sean, Sean, uh, unfortunately, oh, I got, I'm so job, sorry. <laughs> governor, mission accomplished for the governor. I'm so sorry. Who will win the White House based on who wins the World Series? What the Cubs win might mean for election night. That's nice. State of the Union is brought to you by the Peter G. Peterson Foundation.